we now look around what we've got here, um, in the far corner, over this side here, is the, uh, uh, the Locali for um, Sir William Tite, who is the architect of the cemetery. You have the, um, uh, the Gothic lettering, Burbage, um, Friend, Esquire, Charles, um, Baron, etc. in the top. You have the, the mullions and the uh, trisected sections here, the lancet arches, all these classical things that you'd expect from, from good solid um, Gothic architecture. Lots of detail in it. And then of course we have things like the, um, the, 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 the actual ironwork of all of these little lancet doors, which all add to the overall effect of, of grandeur when the people came down here. Um, over in, uh, inside here, you can see as well, there are, there are coffins directly laid onto shelves. Um, these ones aren't so visible, but if we have a look down a couple of the aisles, we can point out some of the more interesting coffins around there. Some of them still have um, uh, funeral tributes um, resting on them as well. So quite remarkable. The, as well, remember too, this was very much a fashion statement and a sign of being wealthy and select. You could only come down here um, through either that back door or that doorway over there. You can imagine paying a sixpence to the uh, uh, cemetery retainer who would come down with a lantern and show you around the place so you could uh, visit your, your departed loved one. This contraption is a catafalque. It's a hydraulically operated um, uh, coffin lift. You see here at this end, we have the, we have the, the pump um, that raises the, the piston underneath here and pushes this up these stays and into the middle of a wooden bier in the centre of the chapel. At the end of the ceremony, there's a little hole in the um, ceiling somewhere over there and we think that probably what would have happened is uh, somebody in the uh, cortege would have given the signal, a piece of string would have been wiggled with maybe a handkerchief on the end, and somebody here would then know to release the valve on this, and just, it's exactly the same principle as when you get your tyres changed at quick fit or whatever, they release the valve and silently the car comes down onto its wheels. Exactly the same here, they release the valve and silently the piston contracts back into the underworld and the coffin comes back down here. Don't touch any coffins. There are um, potentially people who died in the 1850s to the 1900s had smallpox. Smallpox dies when it's exposed to damp atmospheres, but where they've, where they've been sealed in coffins, there's no, um, uh, there's no research as to quite how safe that is. Um, I know that smallpox is one of the few it's the only disease that's been eradicated from people. And um, so we don't go around disturbing things really, really. Now these coffins, because these are um, burials are in the open air, are all lead lined. Um, there'd be an outer an outer shell of some form of ornamental hardwood. The inside will be lead lining and inside that possibly an elm inner lining. These are all chosen either for their uh, water tightness or their decorative capabilities. And when you, what we've got in here is the coffins will then be carried and rested upon racks in here. And we can have a look, walk around to one of the other aisles which, um, yeah. but um, you can have a look around and I'll to answer any questions in the centre if you like. There's no echo, there's no cobwebs, no spiders, no flies, no nothing. It's just completely lifeless apart from us. You come down now and again and say hello.